uh, we have the privilege of having a, uh, Mr. Sudhesh Kamath with us, writer, critic, film reviewer, as well as independent filmmaker. He will be talking to us about uh, the process and art of independent cinema, how to make independent films. I know many of you are into filmmaking as well, and Sudhesh is uh, an inspiration to many. And uh, a word about Sudhish, uh, he has been uh, a friend of the institute and has been associated with me on several of my uh, film workshops. In 2009, we did a workshop with Mr. Kamal Hassan, uh, which was organized on campus. And Sudhish was one of the key members of that uh, committee, organizing committee. And since then, we have been doing several programs film-based workshops in IIT uh, and Sudesh has always been associated with us. So we do hope uh, and we uh, that we carry on this association for a long time to come and we cherish our friendship with you, Sudesh. So over to you now. Thanks so much, uh, Professor Aisha. Thanks. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. What I'm going to try and do is take you guys through the journey of um, how we made the film. Um, as, as an example of how to make a firm or how not to make a firm. Okay? Um, actually, until before I made uh, Good Night, Good Morning, all my talks were about how not to make a firm. Because my first firm was something I made in 2006 and that was uh, really the eye opener for me on, uh, you know, that's how I learned firm making, through mistakes. And that's the only way to learn firm making. If you made a hundred mistakes, you've learned a hundred lessons. So I would urge all of you to go make a film and I would urge all of you to go make a really bad film so that you learn more and you make a better film. Um, so to give you a, a rough idea of uh, my journey into filmmaking, I wrote my first uh, script uh, back in 99. I, I did not see myself as a filmmaker. Um, I had just joined the Hindu and I was catching up with a bunch of uh, old friends from school and we just looked back at our lives and saw how our lives had totally changed from what we had planned it to be and uh, what we had become. So it seemed like a movie by itself, you know, because this is what we wanted to do and here we are. It's almost like life played this cruel joke on us, you know. It was like that. So that is when we thought, hey, it would make a good movie, you know, like life as a movie. And let's try to explore that through the story of a few friends. So that's how we wrote uh, our first script. Me and my best friend from school, we wrote it together. Uh, it was a film called That Folded a Word. Uh, now the thing which a lot of first time filmmakers uh, do is that they try to put in a lot of things and that's one of the mistakes we made as well. Because we were trying to tell three stories uh, of three friends and so each of them had their love story. So which means like think six stories, six characters at least, okay. So six characters and three stories running parallelly and then the film itself need to, needed to have a larger conflict. So we are just complicating things, we were just complicating things too much. So we did make a fairly okay, write a fairly okay script on hindsight but uh, the execution completely different story because, but, uh, because as an independent filmmaker you have limited resources, you have limited money. So. Uh, the best way to make approach an independent firm is to work it out backwards and say that this is the resources I have, this is the money I have, so what can I make with this? Because nobody is going to give you money to make your first film, nobody ever. So if you are writing uh, something like uh, you know Harry Potter or, or Inception, come on, you need a reality check. Nobody is going to fund that film. If it is your first film, write something which you can make yourself which your friends can act because chances are it's going to be a bad film because it's your first film and obviously when you're going to start, nobody s starts out to draw and then draws a perfect uh, painting or whatever, right? It takes practice. So filmmaking is a craft. It requires a certain amount of practice. It requires a certain amount of understanding of a whole lot of arts and it's not just one art because this, it's a synthesis of many arts. There's visuals, there's written word, there's music, there's art design in this thing. So with all this, as a director, you're supposed to know each of these departments. So it's a synthesis of all the arts. So there's no way 
you can say that I am going to make a first film and I am going to make a brilliant first film that is definitely not going to happen. So, how do you make a first film which you can produce yourself which where you would not uh, you know mess up too much which would not be an embarrassment for you in the future when you look back and say oh that was the terrible film I made. Uh, the idea is to make more mistakes, but not so many mistakes that you will have to live with it for the rest of your life right. So, it is a it is a fine balance. So, so I would strongly urge all of you to not to make all your mistakes at the script level and not to make them at the production level, which is why I think it is quite commendable that you know IIT does the series of screenwriting workshops uh, every year, because that is a department which is highly underrated the, the writing department films are actually written first they they made on paper they are not made on film they are not made on video they made on paper they made over, over pages of a script. Once you crack that then everything else becomes relatively easy. So, as I was saying uh, nobody is going to give you money to make your first film and if you have to make all the mistakes in your first film you better write it in the script uh, you make them at the script level. Uh, so, how, how do you start? Where do you start? So, first of all, uh, let us get down to why are you making the film? All of you are filmmakers here, right? So, why do you want to make films? What is your intention behind making films? Any answers? Are you making it for the market? Are you making it for yourself? Are you making it uh, as an inside joke for between friends? What is it for? There is no one standard kind of a film, because all our intentions differ and they are all valid reasons. So, you could make a film as a painting, because it is personal, it is purely expressionistic, it is totally valid and, and you could make a film for the market, it is totally valid. It is just that the language that you use for a painting and the language that you use for a market might be a little different. What is the difference between a painting and a poster? painting is hand drawn, it is personal, it is abstract, it is impressionistic. A poster the intention is to grab your attention, it is in bold typeface, there is a visual that catches your attention, there is a punch line, there is a tag line, every, everything is there uh, right. Um, so, the design of the film has everything to do with your intention of making that film. If you are making it for yourself, you do not have to care about the market. If you are making it for the market, you really need to know your market, you really need to know your audience. You when you <coughs> how many of you are Tamil speakers here? <coughs> how how do the rest of you commute uh, when you are going by auto rickshaw, how do you talk? Yeah, okay. So basically you know that much Tamil, exactly that is the point. Because when you are talking to an auto driver, you have to talk to him in, in, in a certain language, otherwise he is going to take you for a ride. He is going to think that okay, this girls come from the US, we can charge a dollar rate, you know. So, <coughs> because English, when you speak in English, the auto driver's response is very different from how you talk to him in the local language. And that has everything to do with uh, films, when you are making a mainstream film, when you are trying to communicate with a larger audience, you need to talk to them in a language which they relate to, in a language that emotionally appeals to them, in a, in a way that gets their attention, in a way that it communicates to them on what exactly are you trying to do, how far do you want to take them or how far do you want them to go. So, intention has everything to do with the design of your film. As an independent filmmaker, let us bring the economics into it now. You know very well that uh, you are not, it is very unlikely that you are going to get a big enough release, because let us face it the marketing reality today is that if you do not have a minimum of 5 to 6 crores, you cannot even get a film released, because the publicity budgets alone are 5 to 6 crores. I am not talking about production budget, in fact the, the projection budget as in the, the costs it how much it would cost you to project your film itself costs something like 1000 rupees per screening, which means that you need 7000 rupees for 7 shows to just show your film you know and to collect the 1000 rupees per screening, how many people should buy your tickets you know you need at least 20 people to come and watch your film. Independent films do not get more than 10 to 15 people walking in. So, 
independent firms in India today rarely even break even the projection cost, forget the marketing, forget the production. So, as a film maker, if you are going to make your first film, what does that tell you? Do you want to make a film for the market? Obviously not, because it is never going to get out there. So, what do you make it for? You make it for yourself. You make, you make it the most honest film that you can make. You make a film which will actually mean something to you even when you look back to it a few years later. Because there are so many stories you can tell. Why are you wasting all your energy on this story? Why does it mean so much to you? I think that is one thing which a lot of us do not think about. We just invest on ideas just because it occurred to us. An idea occurring to you is just an accident. You should not read too much into it. You should, it is it's, it's like this girl you probably said hi to and you got attracted to and then went home and then you kept thinking about her. Now, if you are going to keep thinking about the same girl, nothing is ever going to happen. Okay? You have to really feel strongly about a person and get to know that person really well before you know that yes, there is a future with that. It is exactly the same thing with the script. You need to be able to know why is this film important? Why should I do this film? That film should mean it should come from a deeply personal place for you to invest in that idea and do it. So, having covered intention, I have to talk about the again uh, economics. So, having econ since economics have everything to do with uh, your actual production, do not write anything you cannot make yourself, which means restrict the number of locations, restrict the number of uh, characters, because even from a writing point of view, it is much simpler to deal with fewer characters and focus on them when you are starting out rather than you know say that okay i am because i have seen it as uh, I, when i wrote that four letter word uh, t about t what, 13 14 years ago i thought i was being unique telling a story of friends and in the last decade i have seen dozens of films made by first time filmmakers all about them and their friends you know it is the most common idea that people decide to make films about them and their friends growing up coming of age because every young person wants to make a coming of age film so, if you if it is anyway coming down to you know a coming of age film, make it more personal, make it about you, make it about one character instead of dwelling on an ensemble and doing that and all because an ensemble means you need to find six actors who are talented or eight actors who are talented who are going to, who all have to invest in the script, who all, all need to invest so much time, who all need to be like really good to pull off the script because one weak link could ruin your whole film. If you watch my first film, you will know what I am talking about, you know. So, so my motivation for making my second film was this. My learning from my first film was that you cannot make a film with no money because I made that four letter word with three and a half lakh rupees. It had uh, a cast of about eight people or something like that. Uh, obviously, we were not able to get like good quality actors because we did not have money to afford them. So, we basically took actors from theatre. And uh, what came naturally to me was English, so I made it in English. And my vision was to make an Indian English film that would work, uh, you know, pan India without it having a Madrasi tag or a or a Bomba, Bombay a North Indian tag or a or or a, or a Mallu tag or any of that. I didn't want race to get into this at all. It had to be because the minute you make a film set in Madras, it's perceived as a Madrasi film, you know, in Bombay or anywhere else, nobody else would watch it. So, already you are making a niche film and then you are making a niche within that. So, the idea was to make a pan India film without bothering about the specificity of a location and just speaking in English, because all of us speak in English and English is sort of our national language, uh, we all communicate at least in the cities, it, we all speak in English. So, the idea was to make an English film which, is, which works pan India, but the learning for me from the film was that. Indian actors are very self conscious when they are uh, speaking in English in front of the camera. Not just actors, anyone. Uh, when you are talking with your friends, you would speak in a certain way and the minute they put a camera in front of you, suddenly you get all conscious and then your, uh, your accent starts playing games with you. you know, it's, so, that happens a lot in Indian cinema. Tell me how many Indian English films have you seen that are actually convincing, where you know, it sounds like they are real people. There is always a certain amount of theatrical element to it. They are actually doing a stage play there. In front of the camera, they are actually doing theatrics, they are doing histrionics. 
you can see the level of acting. So, you have actually created a barrier already, there is, there is no. So, imagine an independent firm, okay, which is usually shot on video. Um, what, will, what is it going to look like? Now, for this we need to understand the differences between different kind of cameras. You know, we have a video camera, what are the different kinds of cameras? We have a video camera, we have a, a firm camera, we have your iPhone camera, we have your and, and I am sure all of you have experienced a little bit of everything, right? You have shot videos with your iPhone or your mobile phone, you have shot videos with a handy cam, you have shot uh, pro probably videos with a slightly more advanced camera once in a while or at least seen or and you have seen film and you have seen IMAX in the theaters. You know they all do not look the same. Right? You know an IMAX screen looks like big, you know a film screen looks slightly smaller than that, you know a video screen looks smaller than that, you know a mobile phone looks smaller than that. The frame as in what would fit into a frame. So, an independent filmmaker is working with a small frame, but in his head he thinks he is making a movie. Okay? So, the language he is employing is probably theatrical, but the visual or the frame that the human mind is used to is that of a home video, because that is the frame. We have all seen home videos, right? we have all seen home videos, we know what a home video frame is going to look like. An independent filmmaker making a film with limited resources, in realistic settings with realistic actors or actors that he can afford, which are basically friends and family, acting out exaggerated sequences in fake English is going to be terrible. right? So, you need to be conscious of what are you using, you are using a video camera, you are using a home video. So, what makes home video, home video? Any answers? It is uncut and there is one more thing that happens with home video. The camera just keeps going, it, it does not, it does not stop, it does not like just because see that camera is like fixed, it is a tripod, it is fixed, it is fixed, it does not move. Okay? Now, if you are going to look at it, it looks like a TV program because it is fixed frame, because in TV the frame does not move, it is still video, frame does not move, it is TV, your mind tells you it is TV. You then you watch MTV, you see the reality shows, how do you know the reality shows? Because the camera is either watching you from a distant, some from hidden corner or there is some guy who is going around like in your face, you know. So, your mind knows what the camera is, we forget that people are exposed to images. We consume images every day, we consume images through TV, we consume images through YouTube. So, we know that a video frame looks like this, we know a mobile phone frame looks like this, we know an IMAX frame looks like this, but somehow while making the film we forget that. We forget that we are using a video camera, so we cannot afford to keep moving it, because if we keep moving the video camera it is going to look like home video. right? So, these are the things we need to like think back and incorporate in the grammar that we are doing it. So, basically when you know that you want to tell a story which is honest, when you know that you are not going to have actors, when you know that you are working with a video frame sort of a thing, you have to keep all this in consideration and uh, write a script according to that, which is what prompted uh, me to make my second film, uh, you know good night, good morning, when I just realized that I cannot make a film. Uh, with too many things with, uh, with no money, because um, the true story of how I made uh, good night, good morning has to do with the fact that my friend asked me what camera should he buy and I told him to go in for the Sony HV, HVR V1 U, which was a very cheap camera at that point of time in 2008 and which we were getting for like 1.4 lakhs, it was a steal and because cameras were very expensive back those days and he bought it for 1.4 lakhs. So, he bought it and then he did not know what to do with it. So, he kept, he kept playing around with it for 6 months and in 6 months he cracked every feature of the camera. He knew how exactly to use it, he went and shot pretty much everything. The best way to learn a camera is to buy it and live with it for the next 6 months. You will explore every feature, you will know how everything works. How do you think kids are so good with video games? Did anyone teach the kid that the kid go to school, video game school to like learn to play video game and go all, all these levels? any kid can beat you at temple run or anything, how do they do that? Nobody taught them, at 4 and 5 if they are able to do it, which means that we are all capable of a lot more than what that kid can do with a, with a video game. 
we, we just do not try it. We need to live with these machines to figure them out because it is just a matter of figuring things out. So, my friend came back with his camera and he said, I know this camera in and out, let us make a movie. And I told him, dude, we cannot make a movie with just a camera unless it is you know uh, two people talking on the phone or you know three people in the house because films cost a lot of money and three people in the house was already done, Ram Gopal Verma had already beaten us to it. So, so we were stuck with two people on the phone. So, we said okay, so if it is a two people on the phone sort of film, uh, it would be boring. Uh, what if we make it split screen? So, we are giving them two times the worth visuals, you know at the same time we are giving them two visuals. So, that is an interesting idea that could work. What if we make it voyeuristic, you know two people doing this thing, we will make one a girl. So, guys are not able to take their eyes off the girls and the, then we put a pretty guy there. So, the girls are also like, so I think that will work. And then everybody has got mobile phones, right. I am, uh, I'm, this is one of those rare classes where nobody is checking their phones. So, I am very touched, thank you very much. But if you go anywhere, you go to a movie theatre, there are phones ringing, people are looking at their phones. Any young girl is on the phone, you look at a, a girl or a guy today, any young person is today on the phone all the time. So, we said this could work, uh, a love story over the, over the phone, two people on the phone, uh, just one phone call and through that one phone call, they should probably fall in love and go through all the stages of romance, okay. Sort of a, a like a, uh, the, uh, the encouraging fact for us was that somebody had already made a movie called Before Sunrise or Before Sunset. Um, before uh, you guys seen it, please go watch it. It is just about two people walking the streets of Vienna and falling in love in the course of the night. So, we thought that okay, it is being done before, it is it's, it's proved, uh, it is it's, it's a, it's a proven fact that you can actually do a film with just two people talking. But Linklater, when he made Before Sunrise, made sure that Vienna had an important role to play. Vienna was the character, it is just that these two people were in Vienna. So, Vienna was the third character in the film. So, we were trying to make a before sunrise sort of a film but without Vienna, so no space. So, now we are, so when you do not have um, the space, then you are talking only, then the focus shifts from the space that you are in to the mental space or the conversation itself. What are you talking about? So, their space, their limited space that they are in. So, the idea was to put them in the most unlikeliest scenarios. So, we thought that um, which is the last place a guy would want to have a romantic conversation, a cheesy romantic conversation, the last place on the planet with his drunk friends. Trust me, there is no other worse place to have a conversation with a girl than with your best friends who are drunk, right. So, because otherwise it would have been just too convenient. Films happen because of conflict. Without conflict, there is no film. Without conflict, there is no story any story you take for that matter happens because of the conflict. Love stories happen only because of the conflict, if there is no conflict there would not be romance. So, we had to bring a conflict, we had to keep like you know, we had to make sure that it was not ideal for both of them. We, we decided that the, the guy would be with his friends driving away from the place where he is with this girl, so that by the time he is done with the phone call, he realizes he is too far away from her and then he cannot go because she has a flight to catch. So, we said okay, so that would be the outline, okay. So, they fall in love as they are getting closer emotionally, geographically they have drifted apart and now what are they going to do. So, once we had that outline, so we knew that they, so we knew all the plan, we knew the ending, we knew the, what the conflict was going to be. So, we just had to break it down into the stages of a relationship. So, then I looked up on the internet to see if there is any theory on that, there was nothing like that. So, I made up a theory by myself saying that every relationship goes through eight stages and uh, just randomly just for the sake of structure. <laughs> so, I made up stages like icebreaker because that is the time you, uh, it could be anything, it could be some line that you said or uh, the first glance or anything random, okay. It is something that broke ice between two strangers, that is the icebreaker. The second would be the reality check, uh, where uh, no, the second would be the honeymoon. Oh my god, I am forgetting my own theory. The second would be the honeymoon where you see only the good things about the relationship. Uh, where you are thinking oh this is awesome, this is this is great, this is she is so perfect, uh, he is so perfect that kind of thing. Third one is the reality check where you start noticing the differences in the other person. The fourth one is the big fight or the break up or whatever, the first time you break up. So, the fifth one would be the first time you patch up, 
okay the, the sixth time if it goes not all relationships survive all these stages some relationships get over at icebreaker some get over at honeymoon some get over at reality check there is no guarantee for this so uh, after coming up with these eight stages we realize that to drive home the, the point that we are making through these eight stages that and the fact that these relationships could be terminated at any point let's go back and um, let's illustrate this through stories which the, the which these two people are telling each other so which which helped us to provide relief from the split screen because throughout the film there are two people sitting and talking so here was a good opportunity to actually dwell into those stories that didn't take off so one was uh, the uh, the reality check where you know the first story is styled as a sitcom where two people are talking on the phone um, until the girl meets the guy and he, she sees that this guy is a geek he's been googling everything he doesn't he doesn't know he was just he just found out everything about me and he was googling everything and he was pretending like he knows me all uh, really well so that's a reality check so similarly again we we created another bollywood scenario to show that people might want different things after a level so you know we uh we came up with four or five episodes that were sort of milestones in every relationship and we put them in to the film to drive home this point on what we were trying to do and what the film was trying to do so um we were able to make a film only because we worked with what we had we knew we had a camera we knew we knew we just needed two actors who were solid performers we need need knew that we needed a couple of other actors who who are okay who can just uh pass off uh, you know who won't be who won't have too much to do really and even then it was quite a challenge for us because one of these guys had to go to the us and we had to like shoot all of uh, one half of the film in like two days so it was things always go wrong the murphy's law is always working overtime when you are making an independent film now uh, so we made the film we had written a different kind of an ending for it we wanted the, the two people to meet halfway you know sort of a metaphorical thing that because for any relationship to work people need to meet each other halfway so if uh, this girl is in new york and if the guy is in philadelphia they have to meet halfway in this place called new hope that was the original climax right so we and the only problem is that uh, the first time we shot the film we shot in new york with uh, uh, with a different actress i won't na name because we are it's being recorded um it cost us a lot of money we lost a lot of money because uh, this actress uh, did not want to work with the actor at that point of time after getting to new york so and because i was making the movie from my own pocket i lost 13 lakhs all i had was four, for first 4 minutes of the movie so i had to figure out a way on how to finish the film without going back to new york which is how we arrived at the black and white structure so i went i took a helicopter ride i took all the aerial shots i needed i got a taxi ride i took all the scenery as you can see from a car came back to madras decided that i'm going to make it like a 1950s film where camp films were still shot inside a studio because back in the day they couldn't afford the outdoor shoots right so they would shoot everything in a studio they would use reverse projection and project footage of moving images and give you the illusion that so it's a stat fixed car so the car is these there are a bunch of people shaking the car and um, there's a reverse projection that gives you an illusion that you must have seen all of you must have seen this so we decided we were going to say that it was intentional so we so we so we made the lines cheesier we made it like old movie we used jazz sort of a score because it has to flow it has to seem like it was organically that way it can't people should know that we didn't have money to do it people should think that this was the design this was the original idea behind the whole thing why is this film in black and white oh because it's a talky obviously oh it's jazz it's the old world romance you know that's why it's in black and white it wouldn't work in color so a lot of people today are convinced that the film wouldn't work in color but uh, actually we had conceived the film in color a uh, lot of people today think that the ending is so you know it's so beautiful that uh, we don't show whether they meet or not and the reason we didn't show whether they meet or not is because the footage we shot was really bad it was it had fake snow so we had on the editing table we had to figure out what do we do this snow looks so fake we can't use this so what do we do so we said okay what if we cut the film before they meet like but that wouldn't make sense right saying no but what if the film begins with a phone call right what if we say that she's just getting one more phone call so then it becomes a like a full circle 
so then we had to just assemble it stylistically to make sure that that was the intention behind the whole film to make it look like the life cycle of the film is that of a phone call so then the ending doesn't matter so that is how we arrived at the ending we just so films can be fixed even at the editing table you just need to have an open mind and you need to figure out this is what we need to do so basically independent filmmaking is it's it's a it's a balance between a lot of planning and then controlling the chaos that happens when things go wrong yeah so make sure you're dealing with few variables so that you're that much more in control of your film you're that much more in control of your vision so you're that much more in control of the end product so that at least you're proud when you look back at the film and say that hey i made this film it it didn't suck that much right okay so um i'm just going to uh, probably wind up with uh, the scene then because i've done talking more or less what i wanted to talk uh this was the original ending that we shot okay these scenes were shot in new york okay when we went there uh the person sitting in the car is a different actress but this was shot in madras at chembarambakam lake which you can see so because we couldn't show it was chembarambakam lake we kept the camera inside the car and we had this this party foam sprayed in to the frame that is the only frame where we have used chembarambakam lake but we had to cut it within 1 second because uh we didn't want people to find out where we had shot it and we cut to all the uh, endings of the episodes that we had shot to show that this story would have worked if this character from this story had met this character from the other story and see the snow it looked really fake because somebody was not able to control the pressure on the spray can so which is the reason why i didn't want to use the scene like the, and this is from back in new york this is again part of footage which is shot in uh, india it, it was just this happy uh, kiss and ending okay yeah so that is how uh, because of that fake snow that you saw was the reason that i didn't want to use that ending because it seems so bad that snow was really fake and it would just look low budget when you're making a low budget film you don't want people to know you're making a low budget film it should look people should get involved into the story than the economics of it that is going to be your biggest challenge as an independent film filmmaker people shouldn't be you you can't say that i don't have money that that's why i made this that is not an excuse people don't care you don't have money they're giving their time to watch something good they they watching it because it's a story would you watch a bad film for more than 2 minutes no you'd walk away what if that guy had sold his kidney to make that film you don't care you know but that's that's the whole point you so it's not an excuse that you do not have money which is the reason why the though the film was required only two people talking on the phone and though it could have been shot in india i made it a point to go to new york for the first 4 minutes of the film that would convince people that money is not the issue the story needed only this much you know the film is a phone call film right uh, and so obviously uh, when people are going to watch it you don't want them to go in beginning to think that oh it's a phone call film it's just going to be two people talking on the phone i don't want that whole thing so there's even more responsibility on you to make sure that is entertaining to make sure that they don't bother about the economics of it they don't worry, worry about what you had to go through or whether you had money or not no money that's not their concern so we had to start off with um, Oh no. Sorry. Yeah. Now we just have to deal with the cold and the wind for the party tonight. This radio thing is something we recorded on 31st December in New York. So it brings that much amount of credibility to the place. You can't recreate this. So you set the mood you get and that's real snow that's not fake snow. So I've just, I've completely with that though, with that sort of an opening with showing you this canvas i made you forget that you're watching a small film about two people on the phone so it's basically new york establishing where it's happening uh, the world i'm taking people into the world so that's the shot of the previous actress walking away so that's why i've blurred it so you can't see that's her and later we when we went back to, for the festival we actually went and shot with seema so that's that one is seema now 
So this is actual footage from New Year's Eve uh, in New York City. So this we shot when we went for our first festival screening. Seema walking into a pub in New York. She walked in and then walked out. That's what you don't see. This was actually pod in Chennai. And we had seven people there to make it look like New Year's party. So what do we do? We make it look like um, we are only focusing on real close-ups. So see there's like, you can see shadows of people behind but you can't see too much. We couldn't have it empty because it looked haunted. It's New Year's Eve. So we had to have some people like moving around. So we're intercutting between the outside space and the inside space. And see this frame is populated with people. So, you, so you're so you mentally thinking that obviously it's a pub. On New Year's Eve there's going to be like people sitting bunched together. So we're cutting back to her. And so we use this light to give it one more layer to so that I'm so you're not paying attention to whether where we shot it we're just underlining the fact that you're uh, we're, we're just we're just trying to remind you that this is a pub so it's more like subliminal cues this was shot against pure black and nothing else that two second shot this is shot outside the studio in Madras so that's why the camera is like that but when we cut it to that it just seems like we shot that in New York as well so that's where the film is supposed to take place, New Yorker. We follow this girl to the room. So she goes, so we follow her. This is again pod. But the thing is, I've taken you through the streets of New York, followed a girl and gone into a room. So now I don't have to show you the rest of New York because the script demands... The, the film is set here. So the film doesn't require the outdoors anymore. So that's uh, one way we... Uh, Uh, New York, we were there for a couple of weeks. So again, this is the this is what I was talking about. You see the back, that's reverse projection that's going on. And so the film begins with a phone call. The, we, have, we have set the mood. The phone rings. This is where the film begins. So from now, I don't have to go back to the streets of New York because it's 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 just this space in her room, and in, with a split screen uh, where we're showing the guy. So we, we dive straight into the story. Guy is drunk dialing a girl and he's talking to her. Obviously she's going to hang up. For the rest you have to buy the DVD and watch the film. <laughs> and also we're running out of time. So, but yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it was uh, a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.